In this video, we're going to talk about transformations in the world of multiple linear regression. Now, this idea is a little funny because it really almost distorts your imagination of what the word linear in linear regression means. So I've found it's often easiest to explain uh, linear first before you get into transformations. So the definition of linear means linear in the coefficients beta. So that is you have multiple terms in your multiple linear regression model. Each term has a beta coefficient in front of it. And as long as all those betas have a bunch of pluses in between them, then everything is fine. Let's write out some quick examples. If we're predicting y, so we're uh, explaining um, some numerical response variable, we have an intercept, which we call beta naught, plus beta 1 times x1. That's like our simple linear regression model. Now, multiple linear regression is going to allow us to add terms in like maybe a second numerical explanatory variable. But here's the trick. As we already saw with the video on interactions, we can multiply x2 by, now let's just be crazy and say x2 all over again. But if you look at that, x2 times x2 is really just x2 squared. And that still defines a linear model because this plus here and here is separating the coefficients beta. So it doesn't matter what happens to the x's themselves, as long as we still have pluses in between the coefficients beta, then we still have a linear model. And in fact, we can be crazy if we wanted to and take the log of x because we've still just added in this coefficient beta times something. We don't really care what that next thing is. You can just kind of add in a bunch of stuff uh, like we've done with multiple linear regression. You can just keep on adding in new terms. But the point here is you can add in terms that build for us models that aren't necessarily straight lines through your data. So I'm going to show us an example using um, the square of a variable uh, in R in a little bit. But I want to give us another example where we could modify with some nonlinear transformation the numerical response variable. Y. That is, we could literally try to predict log of Y. So really, we'd just be predicting that. As long as the coefficients show up linearly, then we still have a linear regression model in the framework of multiple linear regression. So I'm going to show us an example with this and another example with this in R. Let's just dive into it in an effort to uh, keep this video short. So I've already gotten us started here. We're going to load the library ggplot2. We're going to fit, look, even just a simple linear regression model where we're trying to predict the miles per gallon of some cars in our data set MT cars. We're going to try to predict miles per gallon from the numerical explanatory variable weight. And we'll just get a plot. What is wrong with my code? Oh, I see. And I'm going to finally figure out what's wrong with my code and make a plot that represents, there we are, the line going through our data where the numerical response variable is miles per gallon and the numerical explanatory variable is weight. Now, if you look at this line going through these data, there's no observations below the line here. There's few observations above the line here, but many below, and no observations below the line here. So it's not really like this line is going through the middle of all of our data. Really, 
there seems to be some sort of slight curve going on with these data that suggests our line is an inappropriate fit. So what we could do is let's just imagine still using this LM, and I'm gonna show you in a picture first this time, still using LM, and for now we just still don't want those. We can say, give me a second degree polynomial on X. So really that's just saying, give me X squared in my model. And we patiently wait for my computer to think, oh, I don't want it in blue, because then it's like, how many blue lines are we talking about? So let's go with orange. Now look at that curve going through the data. This is still in the world of multiple linear regression, but we have fit this curve through the data because it better predicts these points. Notice the blue line is further from all of these observations up here than is the orange line. That is our curve is fitting the data better out in the tails here and here. So in fact, this appears to be a better model altogether. And you can get it in the world of LM by just saying you want a polynomial on weight to the second degree, and we'll continue to use our data set cars. This is essentially just an interaction term between weight with itself. But poly is the way to do it because it um, a little bit more sophisticated. Notice it includes the first order term for you by default. So this here is multiple linear regression, but it fits a curve through the data because all you're doing is taking the intercept, this estimate here, plus weight times this coefficient, plus this coefficient times weight squared. That turns out to be totally cool. And in fact, let's just show you that there's other options you can deal with. Like, what if you just wanted to take the log of miles per gallon and then just have weight on its own on the left-hand side? Well, R also does not yell at you about that. You can totally just fit that model. But let's do something a little bit better. Let's see if we can plot all of these on one plot. So we're going to go y hat. Now let's create a new data frame by taking empty cars and putting a new variable into it, which is just the predictions from fit three. So we'll go do and do. Let's cut this plot put it down here, change it to data frame, and then just add a GM line. We're on the AES, we put weight. Okay, you ready for this? Notice what happened. We took the log of Y here. So when we go to plot this model, we should get back to the scale of miles per gallon. Color equals olive drab, I think is a reasonable name for color. We're going to say size equals 1.5, so we can actually see it. Let's add all of that together and see if this works first try. It does indeed. So this green line here is our model where we log transformed the response variable and then took the exponential to get back to the same scale as miles per gallon when we plot the actual curve itself. The orange line is our polynomial of degree two, and the blue line is our linear um, model on weight. Notice that both the green and orange lines, these transformed variable models, seem to fit the data much better than the uh, simple linear regression model on weight by itself. So these are options you have in the world of multiple linear regression. You can take 
polynomials of any of your numerical explanatory variables, you could transform your numerical response variable. And because this is multiple linear regression, you can do any combination of these you want. My only caution to you is that these models can get fairly complicated fairly quickly. Like when we took the log here, we had to take the exponential down here to get back onto the proper scale. If that's like a huge reach for you in understanding, well, then you can imagine how complicated it can get if you start adding in many more terms here into your model. That sort of stuff is possible in the world of multiple linear regression, though it does get complicated quickly. And so what I'm trying to do is show you that you can fit curves through data in the world of linear regression in a number of different ways. And often these two transformations are the most helpful of all of the possible transformations out there. The only thing you really have to be careful with is anytime you're taking the log or the square root, you have to be careful about your mathematics. Log transformations cannot deal with uh, zeros in your data set, right? Like, look, R will just tell you log of zero. Ah, negative infinity, that's not a number. Um, and if you're going to take square roots, you can't take square roots of negatives. So if you are doing transformations like this, um, you got to be careful of the underlying mathematics. If you have any zeros in the variable you're trying to transform, it could mess up log transformations. Albeit, when you have a data set where it looks like there's some sort of curvature going on and you would like to fit the data a little bit more closely, uh, you can use transformations like this in the world of multiple linear regression.